Meanwhile, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was sworn into a new term in office today by the nation's Supreme Court, shrugging off global criticism that his leadership is illegitimate due to last year's disputed election. The ceremony contrasted with the harsh realities that face the former bus driver turned socialist leader, including hyperinflation, severe food and medicine shortages, and an exodus of millions of citizens. We have more from the CNN. From her rooftop perch in one of Caracas's poorest neighborhoods, Tiana Nieves is back to coaxing scarce water from a winding hose after scouring both Peru and Colombia for a better life. She is too disillusioned now, she says, to even think about politics. Elections are meaningless here now, that we have to go out and vote. That sense of duty has been lost. Even if the opposition gets the majority, the government always wins, so elections don't mean anything. With fresh contempt, she listens to Nicolas Maduro declare 2019 the year of fresh starts. Touting his experience, Maduro begins a new six-year term after a disputed election last May and a collapsing economy that shows no sign of bottoming out. It's a very, very difficult situation with the economy falling by, you know, nearly 50 percent and, 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 you know, since 2013. It's the largest decline we've seen and, and you know, outside of a war, you know, since the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, and you know, that's a huge, huge, huge economic crisis. Huge can be defined by Venezuela's astronomical inflation rate, expected by the IMF to reach 10 million percent in 2019. With prices for basic food items doubling every 26 days, according to Venezuela's own numbers, that means the monthly minimum wage usually can't buy you one chicken. For nearly six years, CNN has witnessed the desperation and the misery. Cues for basic food, hospitals that lack life-saving essentials, and the backlash, the daring protesters we met in 2017 now silenced. They've been intimidated, imprisoned, or forced out of the country. The election that keeps Maduro in power had the lowest turnout in years and has been discredited by many of its neighboring countries, including Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia. And so how has the Maduro regime hung on for so long? Financially, it seems like it's coming more and more to a head. Um, whether that spills over into the political realm is, it remains to be seen. Propped up by deals with Russia and loan repayment extensions from China, Maduro, though, does hang on. And that's why Tanya isn't counting on anything to change. She joined the three million Venezuelans that the UN says have fled Venezuela since 2014. She returned with nothing. If my choice is to struggle somewhere else or struggle here, I'd rather struggle here. And that struggle is the only thing Venezuelans have learned to count on. Paula Newton, CNN.